Hey, hey. Hi, guys. Welcome back. All right. So this is going to be a bonus general message. Um, by the way, sorry, I was away for a little bit. Um, had family and friends and all kinds of social events going on. And it was wonderful. Um, but when I got home from work last night, I was dead. I just went straight to bed. So let's get us caught up. Okay. So we have the tower and we have ace of swords now normally i start these out with an anecdote something real something happened with my dog but just knowing that there was a lot going on is that's that's the inspiration for today's message um and kind of like the reset button which is kind of um, the tower produces a reset button so somebody is having a major tower moment i don't know why exactly yet other than it looks like the truth came sliding on in and sometimes when the truth comes sliding on in it it levels stuff right the truth sets us free sure but the truth also levels things so if this is somebody who had an epiphany a they could be an aries it could be a libra gemini aquarius um if this is somebody who has had the bottom drop out of their world and they know exactly why they could have gotten some piece of news. It could be something that just like, bam, it's something they never expected. They did not know or expect or anticipate this. And it's like, oh my God, I can't believe this. The chariot, this <laughs> Cancerian energy. This could be somebody that has just now recognized maybe somebody has moved on and they're really stunned to discover it. This could also be somebody who suddenly realizes I must go. I must go to where I need to be. Everything says this to me. Hey guys, Lisa, Irene, Slate Princess, Crystal Royal. So glad to see you. Thanks for popping in everybody. We have got King of Pentacles. We got Page of Cups and we got the Fool. I, I got to pose a couple more questions here because what we see is someone's world has been shaken. Some incredible truth has hit them like a ton of bricks and that is I must go. I must become the king of pentacles. I must make an apology and I must basically do something I've never done in my life, which is to simply give it all I've got. Now I could say we, and we need to leave this other storyline open until we can really clearly pick a lane here. This could still be the other storyline that I mentioned where a character recognizes, oh my God, they moved on. They moved on. They're either with the King of Pentacles or they are starting a new romance with the King of Pentacles or they became a King of Pentacles. And they're the ones who have already taken the leap of faith with somebody else. And I never expected them to do this. This could be a masculine who is discovering that someone that they had always considered theirs kind of actually has somebody new in their life. I don't know. Let's take a look at this. Let's see, can I get the clarity on this so I understand which storyline to roll with? Five of Cups, Inspiration of Wands, Present Moment, Three of Wands. Oh boy, I'm going to say that we have, I believe, I'm just going to read it based off what we see on the cards, but we have a Divine Masculine who is devastated because they have just recognized Oh my God, all this time, I thought someone was sitting around, maybe still feeling emotions for me, maybe sending me little vibes of, I'm still connected to you, boo. And they're like, I can't believe it. She or he has not been thinking about me. And it's like, it's rocked them. All of a sudden, they're sitting in a present piece of acknowledgement that their future is now unwritten. If they were somehow planning that this person was going to be their slam dunk only to realize this person has moved on from them, is starting a new romance, possibly with a king of pentacles or that they are a king of pentacles. I'm going to go with that storyline right now. That's what this is looking like. Let me ask this. Who was it? Was it the king of pentacles that they thought was going to be their person or have they recognized somehow that their person is with a king of pentacles? or has started something new. We have 10 of wands. It's a huge burden. Um, I'm, I don't see that exact definition in this. I think I would lean, seven of wands, I would lean toward it being 
for whatever reason, the person that they have considered to be theirs is now with a king of pentacles. This person, they are realizing, felt heavily burdened by the relationship with them and even felt the need to hide away. Okay, hold on. That's a weird message. Why? Who is this person that they were in love with then? Or that they wanted? We have Ace of Cups. We have Nine of Cups. It's somebody who they saw as their wish fulfillment and their, their happiness. Then what happened between them and this person who they claim I love and they're my wish fulfillment? Because remember, this person said I needed to hide away and, and stay away from, from you. Lovers. Did they choose some other romantic partner? Did they choose some other Gemini? Were they unfaithful somehow? Eight of Pentacles, High Priestess. They were still working on something with some other individual. And I'm going to say this. We're going to name the person that they cannot believe is out of their life and is now connected to a King of Pentacles. And we'll ask why they think that in just a minute. But we're going to call this person the High Priestess. So this lead character... They are stunned, absolutely stunned. They can't believe that the high priestess has somebody new in their life. Now, the high priestess, though, knew that they were actually dedicated and still very much working on something elsewhere and that the high priestess they were trying to still have as like a lover on the side. This is long-term dedication. This is the choice between lovers. The high priestess recognized that this individual was not, was not there for them, was in fact still somehow dedicated elsewhere. So, so this lead character looks to me like there's somebody who wanted their cake and eat it too. Now they say, but I love my high priestess. My high priestess is my wish fulfillment. My high priestess is the person that I was always going to have peace and harmony and, you know, the otter of love, love story with, like, it, it's going to be awesome someday. But the high priestess said, I need to stay the hell away from you. I look at you as a predator. I look at you as somebody who goes out to get what you want. I put up blockages. You were a burden to me. I need to, to leave this whole situation. I think it's just now hitting them that the high priestess sees them as exactly what they were in this storyline, which was somebody that she wanted to get away from or he wanted to get away from somebody. I mean, these two cards say a lot, heavy burden, someone not to be around. They're like, but you're my wish fulfillment. I always thought someday we're going to end up together. You know, you're the one I, I pick, even though I'm loyal elsewhere. Now they might've said, I am loyally working toward eventually being able to pick you too. They, they thought they had some telepathic connection to the high priestess. But they also knew that the high priestess was aware that there was someone else. That I'm going to read it this way any, any way I slice it right now. Because the high priestess had some inner knowledge. That, yes, they were working on something. But yes, there was some telepathic connection. The only thing is they misread all that. They thought, see, the high priestess knows that, of course, I'm working on stuff. And of course, we're going to be together again someday. When, in fact, the high priestess said, wow, I can't believe somebody would operate this way. Especially if you profess to love me. How is it that you do this? That's why I want to stay away from you. They didn't get that part of it until now. So it comes as a shock and, a, and I will say a devastating loss for this character to suddenly realize the high priestess is not alone. The high priestess moved on with somebody else. Not only that protected themselves against this lead character and it's hitting them now. This is really where it's at. Their future is now, it doesn't have the high priestess in it. Their future is all of a sudden, like completely unwritten. What did they think was going to happen? Why did they think that they could have this situation where they were imagining that the high priestess was somehow always going to be theirs? Six of Pentacles in the reverse. I feel like this was a pretty deluded message. Um, I don't have to give to something. It'll still just be there for me. It's not about equal give and take. It's just, you know, I'm not going to give anything right now. And that's just how it is. Ace of Pentacles in the reverse. I'm not ready for a new beginning. That's why I'm not around with the High Priestess. But what did they think was going to happen in the High Priestess's life? 
six of swords in the reverse, five of swords. Oh yeah, I know they blocked me, but they'll never get over me. Ooh, pride cometh before the fall, my friend. This person, the idea that they would say, the high priestess is mad at me, of course, and they blocked me, but it doesn't matter because they're not over me. That's a really, really bad look. I'm, I, that's probably one of the nastiest things I've seen. Um, someone, you know, like it, it just seems so uncaring and it seems so arrogant and it seems so selfish. Universe weigh in because I haven't described this character with a very nice, nice touch, have I? The universe says, well, they think about their four of wands. This person is their ideal person. Then <laughs> seven of cups. So they had no idea how to get that. So they held on to this idea that I met my person. My high priestess is my going to be the one that I build my empire with. I don't know when, I don't know how, but I mean, obviously it's going to happen. At some point, we'll eventually be looking into the same cup, seeing the same future together. And that's just how they rolled with it. Is, is that universe way in on that whole topic of this is what I'm going to envision. I just don't know how it'll ever happen. Six of wands, the universe says, and it made him feel really good. It made him feel really like this was their secret money in the bank. This was like, I mean, I'm living my day-to-day -day life. I'm not with my high priestess, but in the back of my mind, I know they're going to be mine. We're going to have an amazing, they, they, they felt really good about this thing, this life that they could kind of fantasize about someday having, because they were just so sure someday they'll have it, but they have no idea how. But that made them feel really good. No wonder this is such a tower moment. The bottom dropped out. The feel goods dropped out. The fantasy got like stark reality. It's like somebody who's been, been daydreaming with like earphones on and they've, you know, closed the blinds and they're taking a break at work and they're just all happy and fantasizing about, you know, how life's going to go. And they got this grin on their face. And then the boss walks in, opens the blinds and says, you're in the middle of a work day and you're not working. So guess what? Like, you're not working here anymore. It's like they're, the reality comes crashing in all of a sudden. Tell me about that aspect of this, this reality that comes crashing in on them. Ace of Cups, Five of Cups, Queen of Pentacles. All of a sudden, the idea that the person they love, because I think they suddenly say, but I have so much love for them. The amount of love that they actually have for this character that they admittedly were not moving toward, were not connecting to, were not doing anything to have in their life. The amount of love that they have for that person has suddenly become this massive burden, this massive overwhelming. I mean, look at how huge this is bigger than a, a whale. Their love is over the top and so is the grief surrounding this. If all this time this character has been dilly-dallying in another situationship for whatever reason, and I don't want to go down the road of whys, but whatever they had been so dedicated to, the whatever we saw with that, the tattoo card with the German Shepherd on it and the Eight of Pentacles, they are realizing they lost the prize. This dilly-dally over here, they are realizing, A, that they actually had all this love, supposedly, I mean... <laughs> I have a hard time with this storyline. I have a hard time thinking that this is love at all, that somebody can love someone, but then do everything wrong toward them. I, I would question whether or not this person has a capacity to like actually love, but this says it they do. So just because I disagree, the cards say differently. I just hold a different opinion. Um, remember, these are fictional stories. Feel free to always have your own different opinion also. Um, the way this comes out though, the fact that we have them really feeling this intense loss. And I think that they're seeing the loss of everything that could have been. Maybe they could have had babies with this person. Maybe they could have had, you know, their rocking chair years with this person. And they're seeing the loss of everything in between. The life we could have lived. And the life that a Queen of Pentacles is now going to be having with the King of Pentacles. And it's like... Oh, is it Billy Ray Cyrus who has a song? It could have been me standing there with you. 
could have been me and my dreams coming true, something like that. It feels like that, like they are realizing they lost their, their king, their queen. They lost their person. They see exactly what the value of this person was. And it's really interesting that they know darn well this person has found their mate. This is still the high priestess is the way I see it. Um, I'm going to leave them alone for just a second. And let's jump over to that high priestess slash queen of pentacles that is clearly very happy with someone else at this point, or so they think. Now, I don't know about that yet. That's their assumption. But let me begin by asking, actually, let's go with this deck. Why do they believe this? Why do they believe this? All right, let's see. We've got um, um, we've got them saying five of wands, two of wands. When I said, what is it that makes them think this? They actually don't know for sure. Five of wands says they're going round and round and round in their mind. Two of Wands says there's an energy of, oh my gosh, did they choose somebody else? It never struck them that they could lose the high priestess. Now it struck them. Eight of Pentacles in the reverse, the moon. Okay, so something has popped up where they, they feel a change in the high priestess. They feel a difference in all of this. They sense that the high priestess is, they used to tap somehow into the high priestess's energy. The high priestess's energy is not there at this point. It's, they sense um, a weakening of that, that bond. They sense she may have already walked through some doorway. They feel like they can't, it's almost like they're even losing some kind of a, a motivation to keep doing the thing that they were doing because they suddenly have like a almost like a panicky like th this alarm bell is ringing in their brain and it doesn't calm down it keeps going round and round and round and round oh my god oh my god oh my god she's with somebody else she walked through a different door she's with somebody else she walked through a different door now their dedication to doing the thing they had been planning which is, oh, I, I stay right where I am, but someday I just, someday I'll, I'll get back to that high priestess. I have a telepathic connection. Now all of a sudden they don't want to keep working on the thing that they've been working on because there's this weird, empty vacancy. It's like um, the moon is what's hidden, but it's what's in the subconscious and it's what's under the surface. Something, <sighs> okay, now uh, the Etta James song, uh, I would rather go blind. Uh, she says something told me it was over. It, it feels like that. Something tells them. She, the high priestess's energy, I can't tap into it anymore. I used to have the, that, um, wherever that lover's card went, I used to be able to feel them. And then I would just keep working on the thing that I was so dedicated to, but I would still tap into them and I would still feel them. There's an emptiness here. It's like ringing the phone and nobody picks up and they can't quite believe it. It's like sending a text message and, you know, even if somebody didn't respond, you used to see that they read it. Uh-uh, they can't see it now. She's gone. And they don't know anything about where she's at or what's going on is the truth. But everything has the alarm bells ringing that says something changed. A doorway opened up for her and she walked through it. And now they themselves don't have the desire to keep working on this, whatever this was that they were so content to keep working on and keep just holding on to her with that 5D energy of, it's almost, it's weird. It's like they, they imagine they were having a 5D relationship, but cheaty thing going on with her. I don't know how else to explain that. That's a really weird message I know, and I'm sorry I don't have a better way a cheaty thing, <laughs> a 5D non-existent yet telepathic connection where they decided it doesn't really matter what they're doing in the 3D world because, you know, I'm still connected to her. And that arrogance that that they believed this and it really made them feel good. And now they realize something has changed and she's not there. They can't tap into her anymore. 
her energy is gone. And they're sure it's because she's with somebody else. Every that, that fear is mounting in their head. She's gone. She's with somebody else. That's the only thing that could make the energy unattached to me is if she attached it to somebody else. Got a nine of coins. For some reason, I feel like train cars. When I said attached to somebody else, I feel like she detached that caboose and left them out there in the middle of a of a train track. And then she got on a new set of tracks and picked up a completely new, you know, train that she's either now a part of or that's a part of her. That's that's the image in my mind. They they know something's different. Nine of coins is here. Knight of Cups in the reverse and the tower. She got over them. Plain and simple. She got over them. What they okay, so let me put it this way. If an energetic connection could be seen as more than just energy, could be seen as something like a, an actual, um, like think of Velcro. Okay. Velcro sticks really good at first, but we all know over time, any like hoodie or something or article of clothing that we had Velcro on, the more we wash it, the more little bits of fuzz from our other clothes get stuck and matted into it. And then finally, at some point in time, the more times we dry it, we know the Velcro starts to kind of get warped and it gets less Velcro-y. And then finally, one day, it just doesn't even stick anymore. And we're like, okay, this hoodie is no good or this whatever article of clothing it was. My pocket, you know, on my windbreaker, no longer Velcro shut the way it was supposed to anymore. That's the way I would say this connection has been. It was really Velcroed for a long time, and then it's been detached. And this is this is her. It ended for her in a big moment, too. The Velcro doesn't stick anymore. She says, I don't actually believe that they loved me at all. They That wasn't love. They didn't come toward me. They didn't actually offer me anything. And at this point, I can't believe it, but I hope they don't. At any point, she got over it. She got more fulfilled on her own and the whatever the velcro was there's nothing that attaches her to them anymore and i think it happened for her suddenly also that she realized i'm actually so good without them maybe she filled her life up so much filled her own cup up so much without them being there she built so many memories by herself she connected to so many new people she had so many changes in her life she you know this could be everything from oh i've changed careers i've built, you know, a, a house for myself. I've moved. I've gone through ups and downs, significant losses and significant celebrations all without them in my life. And just so somehow that that energetic bond means nothing anymore. And that Velcro doesn't even stick anymore. I don't know. It, it seems like she got over them kind of like in the final um, threads have been detached from her all at once. I don't know if she's surprised by it. Let me just ask, is she at all surprised by this? No, she feels free. Wow, Eight of Swords in the reverse. Strength card upright, Empress upright. I gotta say this was a tremendous karmic connection for her. It was holding her back. It was prohibiting her from being the full-blown Empress. Now, when I say her, please know I am not, um, I don't read stories for genders ever. So this could be about two men, two women, reverse gender roles, but I will to keep the storyline straight. I have to pick what we're going to, how we're going to describe a character. Otherwise it's just madness, right? But as an audience member, just know you can flip this any way you want. You can alter whatever you want, but I got to read it in one way. Otherwise none of us can follow the story. So she, we're going to stick with she. And this is classical female archetype, the mother energy. The energy of the moon is what I mean when I say that. The gravitational pull. She is, this is also strong masculine energy. Um, she's pretty darn balanced right now. We got two major arcanas to describe how she feels. This is someone where when she fully has the Velcro detached from them, it's when she actually, this was weighting her down. This was almost anchoring her as she is now detached from them and they no longer have a pull on her and she no longer imagines that they're loving her or wanting them to love her how and i don't know which it really was maybe for a long time she wished they were going to come toward her and offer her love you know ride toward me come offer me something the thing is i don't 
he really ever believed that they would come in as a king or an emperor or an empress or anybody more so than a knight. Because she, even in her fantasy, they were just a knight who would someday come riding in to offer me love. Now she says they'll never do that. And honestly, I don't want them to. Um, I've gone through so much alone, so many highs and lows, and the net result of my life is I'm successful, and they weren't ever a part of it. And now I'm free of them. And now, holy smokes, they had been holding me back. The idea of them, me giving space in my head to them, was holding me back. She's in a really good place. I think she's just realizing how happy she genuinely is with her life now. Much stronger, much more, um, feeling much more confident and competent in her own self, in her value. Um, this is somebody who's like, she doesn't think about them at all. At this point, she's she's really done with them. So what does that mean for this entire story? Because we still see them out there like dealing with the repercussions of all of a sudden their future doesn't have her in it. All of a sudden they have, you know, we saw them with the five of cups twice. It's a huge amount of grief to go through. And we see her on the completely opposite spectrum. I said, what does this story mean? Well, we have the Six of Swords, we have the Emperor, and we have the Page of Pentacles. I just keep saying on her side, because she's fully detached, she can now finally meet her Emperor. Remember, she's in an Empress mode. She can finally now have her Emperor. She can finally now start truly fresh with something healthy and satisfying and whole. And she instantly jumps into the best relationship ever. It means she takes it step by step but is completely ready for something healthy and whole. Now, let me ask really quickly, because remember they said, I know she's with somebody else. She's with a king of pentacles, that she's a queen of pentacles and she's with a king. They got that up wrong about her too. She's not a queen at all. She's a freaking empress. So they still never even saw the realist potential of her from what I can tell. But let me ask, was there any king of pentacles at all? Nope. That's the craziest part. She simply, the Velcro just stopped sticking. There wasn't any King of Pentacles. There wasn't somebody else that she bonded to. She just simply was no longer bonded to them. All of that that she felt for them went up in smoke. All of those dreams were just kind of exactly that. If she back to me, because that was what they transmitted to her, you know, through that. Um, telepathy all the time. Someday I'm coming back. Someday I'm... And she held on to that for a long time until finally it was like, you can see, this isn't a dream anymore. Now it's like a freaking nightmare. I don't want them coming back. That is so not my dream for them to come back anymore. Because look at what I've done. Look at what I've had to go through in my life. Look at my ups and downs. Look at the way I've built myself. Look at who I've become. Look at who I am today. I have my nine of cups. I'm strong. I'm an empress. I, I see myself in a good light. I see myself, again, this could be a masculine too, but whomever this is, they. this is what happens when somebody says, oh yeah, I love them. Oh, this telepathic connection, someday we'll be together. No, someday you won't be together because what it takes to build a connection is to be there. Life is made of tangible stuff. Yes, we are spiritual creatures living in mortal bodies, but a, a strictly 5D connection with somehow this, oh, we'll just float along and we'll just have a 5D connection. No, that's not what we are made of. We have to breathe air and eat food. You want somebody to make dinner with you. You don't want somebody who only connects with you in the 5D energetic world and then claims, that, oh, but that's such a great connection. You know, someday, someday. Uh-uh. This is not a time for someday, not in this story. In this storyline, and I'm not saying it couldn't be that way. Maybe some people love the 5D and they just want to always live in the what could be. But that is not the kind of character that we were dealing with. Come on, she's made out of a tree, for God's sakes. She's made of the earth. She's growing from a rooted place. How could she possibly be satisfied, fulfilled, or nourished in a connection that doesn't exist in any tangible world? If that person is not there to wrap their arms around her to be beside her for the the celebrations and the the you know ups and downs of day to day life that come with micro wounds and and sometimes big losses that you know you want a partner beside you or you want a shoulder to cry on or you just want somebody to laugh with or you want somebody to take a vacation with she's 
going to expect all of that for herself. Not because she has to have somebody in order to enjoy her life, but she damn sure isn't going to be living in fantasy land of 5D connection. That's the part of having them. I know it sounds so harsh. I'm so, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Lynn, thank you, sweetheart. You are so kind. Thank you. I am absolutely honored. You are so kind and generous. The fact that we have this incredible... I think that I'm going to maintain that statement, though. Having nobody would be better than having the non-existent telepathic connection. And that's what made her walk away from this. It wasn't to go to, she didn't even have anybody else on her radar. She will now. She had the courage to break away from something, not because she had to go find somebody else to replace them to bond with, but because she had to come to the conclusion that I don't want to hold on to a non-existent telepathic bond. And I mean, that doesn't mean it's non-existent, but to her, like, tied to them, they could pull her around with them. And she had to wriggle out of that invisible lasso. Their thought is she must have bonded to somebody else. No, she just doesn't want to be held captive by their invisible lasso anymore. I think... I don't know what happens with them, but we see she ends up with an emperor. She's only just now to be able to be with an emperor. Has anybody else having any trouble with the um, the audio? Abbasis, I see that you were struggling, sweetheart. I'm glad you popped out and came back in. We got the King of Pentacles in the reverse. <sighs> Again, she doesn't want a King of Pentacles either. She wants a freaking emperor. Why go with you know, anything. She never even met a King of Pentacles and she's bypassing. So let me put it this way. If we were to step back a little further and say in this storyline, what we had was a character who went from like this, this high priestess was, was energetically bound to this person for a long time. And then she finally severs that connection. And then instead of going through like the learning phase now of like maybe dating around and then meeting a king and then eventually building something strong. She makes this giant leapfrog because that was super brave to be able to say, I'm done with 5D connections. I'm done with people that aren't present. I personally want to be present in my own life and that's why I want someone who's present. And the decision and the personal power that she gains from saying, this is what I want. I want the real deal. That is why she leapfrogs all the way to an emperor and there never is any king in the mix. It, I mean, kings are great, but but that's not what she, she's not a queen. She's not going to match with them. She's an empress who has to have an emperor. And that's exactly what we have for her. It's really an interesting um, story that says the next person that she's she entertains in her life, this is a person she marries. This is a long-term commitment that lasts. I don't know how quickly she meets this person, but I would say pretty darn quick. So it's it's really interesting. What does happen to them, to the person who, <sighs> the sun sideways. I, I don't know. They still seem very, they're never going to be direct. They're never, hmm, eight of swords. They're never going to fully understand why they can't quite get over her, but they also don't have any courage to go toward her and show up in her life as an emperor. So it's not them that, that she ends up with. This, I would almost say, is like the end of a twin flame connection that wasn't ever going to become a reality. And it's, and we could say, we could say that we're sad for them, but you notice these are their own little guides that they put in a little, you know, lock them up. And yet they aren't really locked up. They just refuse to listen. Just like this, they could have actually still come forward and stepped in and become that emperor right away. But they didn't. They said, oh, she's with some king of pentacles. And ironically, she's not. They still had a chance. And if they had really wanted this, they maybe could have rushed in, could have fought for this, could have actually still been with her. But they don't even have the clarity on that. They won't listen to, supposedly they loved a lot. They loved her a lot, but they didn't ever take the action. In fact, they did the reverse. And they still don't understand why are they not happy. They kind of have the grief that she's gone, but it never crosses their mind. Fight for something if you really want it. If you really say you love somebody that much, why they didn't fight for it before, they're not fighting for it now. I don't know 100% that this person ever wants something in the 3D. That could be the ultimate aspect about them that we didn't really touch on. Um, it could be they never really, 
wanted something that that was concrete, that was solid. Let me get one more. The thing that makes me question that a little bit is because they they had that Eight of Pentacles and they had the tattoo with the dog. We got Ace of Wands in the reverse. We got the star in the reverse. I will say this, and this is, I, I never like stories that are, like I always hope our characters grow and that everybody winds up better at some point. I don't have that to say about this character at the end of this story though. It says there is that sinking feeling that they missed an opportunity, but they probably won't identify until far later on. It'll always be like, why, why did something not work out? How did I miss out? their love story to write with somebody else. Again, maybe this person doesn't really want to be in a connection though. Maybe they just want the fantasy connection. Thing is, they're not actually going to find that fantasy telepathic connection again either. These two cards say there isn't really anyone else who lights their fire like this with the Ace of Wands in the reverse. And there isn't a way that they go back in time and heal this with her. This is kind of one that they have accrued some karma in this lifetime and because they kind of refused to acknowledge it while it was going on, it's interesting to see a story where we're seeing someone pick up karma in this lifetime that maybe they'll have to deal with the next time around. They could deal with it in this time around. They could go ahead and just, you know what I always think with karma, it's not punishment, it's just actions have reactions. If they can't understand how their actions led to them missing out on someone that they said they loved, but they didn't take genuine action to be present in that person's life to be a partner they might just simply need to ask themselves why was i not ready for that is that something i didn't really want and why did i not really want that and that's fine if they don't but it's kind of like they got to do some some soul searching for themselves but instead they're just sitting around feeling bummed out and feeling like they won't find that bond with anybody else i do think they really loved this person but they've got something to work on in themselves and unfortunately, they're refusing to do that, you know, like take a look at why did I, why did I operate this way? Why did I want to hold on to a telepathic connection and never put in genuine energy, but lie and say that's what my plans were until my person finally moved on with their life? Why did I do that? What part of it, you know, are they afraid of connections? Are they not feeling good enough for connections? Or are they kind of happy with the way they're doing stuff? I mean, the sun is the happiest card in the deck. Sideways, they're not really unhappy being the way they are, but they are unhappy that they don't still have that energetic connection and that they can't make one with anybody else because this one was special. That's the part that they're bummed out over. But I think meeting her at all was, it was definitely their karmic. She was their karmic and they were hers. It wasn't a twin flame. I know we didn't see the two of cups at all, but this was a storyline of, characters that were supposed to learn lessons from each other. They just haven't acknowledged what the lesson was yet. And it, I'm not going to try to acknowledge it for them. That's up to this character to figure all that out. But this was a very special connection, just not for the reason that, you know, like, oh, these two are supposed to be together and have love. They could have been, but lots of things could have been. But it doesn't mean that there's only one person that's right for us in this world. This is an example of, wow, I learned a lot about myself or could have learned a lot about myself and what makes me tick through this very amazing person who I actually did have a ton of love for and I had an, an incredible energetic bond with. What does that mean? If I had such an incredible energetic bond, what? those are especially maybe the relationships where it must mean that there's a lot more to understand. There's a lot bigger lesson here, but that means we've got to be thinking about it and contemplating it to get the lesson out of it. And I don't think this person wants to do that. I don't know what they're afraid of, but they definitely don't want to have to hear um, whatever their instinct or their guides are telling them. That's why they put their little guides in that, um, I almost said beehive, don't ask me why, in the birdcage. <laughs> Not the beehive, the birdcage. All right, I'm going to leave that one there. Woo, that was a doozy, huh? You guys, thanks so much for hanging out with me. Really nice to see everyone. All right, bye for now. I'm sorry, there must be more um, issues with uh, YouTube today. 
it's ups and downs of the internet and you know big platforms with lots and lots going on so i'll just say i'm still super grateful for having an opportunity to be on a platform like this even if there are some glitches here and there they usually get worked out thank you guys for being so um just understanding and rolling along with with the ups and downs of technology all right bye guys